All right, everybody. This was a response to a comment. I had to put this out on Facebook. I basically just said, fuck it. I'm going to record this for y'all to hear. And by the way, I just want to send my love out to the whole entire trucking convoy that's out there in Ottawa right now. May you guys succeed in your ultimate goal without bloodshed, without any violence, because you know that's what they're waiting for. Keep a calm head. Keep a cool, serene, everybody. We will prevail. We already had Trudeau running for the hills. Anyway, guys, this next document is dedicated to the average everyday Joe. May safety and logic find you. So, if you haven't noticed, now we're dealing with having been scammed by the globalists that have had you on a slow simmer for well over 25 years of our recent history. If you're getting your news from the cable box or the mainstream outlets like the CBC, CNN, RT, Al Jazeera, Daily Mail, whatever, basically any news agency that builds its portfolio and obtains its news from the Associated Press bought by routers under careful watch since the late 1980s with one of the Rothschild brothers on the board, yeah, well, where Reuters executive branch made the AP become the central hub for the international news going into the 21st century across what's known as the Five Eyes. Canada, United States, United Kingdom, Australia, and New Zealand, with top interaction prizes, of course, with the special mentions of Israel, hot spice number six, and and several are chomping at the bit with the powers granted to them with the Trans-Pacific Partnership and other deals between NATO and these new European nations. I don't care if you think I'm nuts because I don't watch your brand of bullshit on the television. Go fuck yourself if you don't like it and leave me alone. I can't leave you alone, however, because you'll smile and you'll let them walk you all the way to the goddamn gas chambers. Somebody has to pay attention to y'all when you're too stupid to know any better. But the last two years aren't enough for you. And remember, we, we can't go back to the old ways because our government does not want to relinquish the powers you help them take just by letting them take away your rights. Good job. I think you just won us a Darwin Award. Catch you on the flip side, right? You may think I'm being spicy or confrontational, but I'm being neither. I do this out of love for all of you and for the generation that gets handed the reins in about 35, 40 years. The kids who are two to four years old right now, during the first five formative years of their life, their brains are growing the little neural pathways to become the person that they're going to grow into. I can't wait to see how our beautiful little future sociopaths, psychos, and socially inept shoulder biters turn out. They really owe you one. In all seriousness, this is something that needs to be dealt with, addressed, and mitigated now, or we are fucked as a whole. All of us lose. Don't respond to any of this if you're gonna be an asshole. I'm not going to explain myself, defend myself, or give a shit about your level of awareness. If you come at me any other way than peaceful, you're on your own. Oh, Robert, how come you get to be so mean and fuck off? They didn't take my rights away because I exercise my rights every damn day. I'll do that until they put me into a box. You, on the other hand, as long as you do what you're told, everything will be fine, right? How'd that work out? Remember saying the words, it's not my problem if it doesn't affect me. Remember that saying? That's why we're in this mess. So don't say a fucking thing about anything to me unless you come friendly. I apologize for sounding nasty, but I had to get that off my chest. By the way, for anyone else, I went to college for radio broadcasting, so I kind of understand the journalism gig rather well. I was also in the military, so I know what happens at security levels above restricted, which is basically standard civilian. There's a reason why we're not allowed to speak about our military careers behind the scenes, not just with you, but with each other. So go ahead, tell me I'm crazy. The game is rigged while you are still trying to catch the queen. That's a metaphorical reference to some kind of game played in an alleyway with cars and your money and your time. Anyway. 
This is Robert J. Morris, the observer and recorder of history, and your mom's favorite. Ciao for now. This report I received today is a monumental document in more ways than one. But it is a very, very important piece of America's history and it will shape America's future in ways that will make us a more honorable, more successful and more ethical country. What this committee learned I would like to review today with a little more detail than Dr. Faden said, because I think it must be engraved on our national memory. Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. The goal was to understand the effects of radiation exposure on the human body. While most of the tests were ethical by any standards, some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. They failed both the test of our national values and the test of humanity. Informed consent means your doctor tells you the risk of the treatment you are about to undergo. In too many cases, informed consent was withheld. Americans were kept in the dark about the effects of what was being done to them. The deception extended beyond the test subjects themselves to encompass their families and the American people as a whole. For these experiments were kept secret. And they were shrouded not for a compelling reason of national security, but for the simple fear of embarrassment. And that was wrong. So today, on behalf of another generation of American leaders and another generation of American citizens, the United States of America offers a sincere apology to those of our citizens who were subjected to these experiments, to their families, and to their communities. When the government does wrong, we have a moral responsibility to admit it. The duty we owe to one another to tell the truth and to protect our fellow citizens from excesses like these is one we can never walk away from. Our government failed in that duty and it offers an apology to the survivors and their families and to all the American people who must, who must be able to rely upon the United States to keep its word, to tell the truth, and to do the right thing. Make no mistake, as the committee report says, there are circumstances where compensation is appropriate as a matter of ethics and principle. I am committed to seeing to it that the United States of America lives up to its responsibility. Our greatness is measured not only in how we so frequently do right, but also how we act when we know we've done the wrong thing, how we confront our mistakes, make our apologies, and take action. That's why this morning I signed an executive order instructing every arm and agency of our government that conducts, supports, or regulates research involving human beings to review immediately their procedures in light of the recommendations of this report and the best knowledge and standards available today and to report back to me by Christmas.